4. Let's look at this. 1 John chapter 4. Let's start reading here at verse 1. It says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Amen. Whereof you have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. We are coming out of 1 John chapter 4 tonight, and we're going to elaborate on a few other scriptures. Amen. In the Bible. Amen. It tells us in verse 1, it says, Beloved. Now, the beloved is speaking of the church. Amen. It's speaking to the bride of Christ. Amen. And he says to us, believe not every spirit. Amen. Amen. But try the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Now, how many of you have heard of false prophets? Amen. False prophets. Now, false prophets exist and one of the atrocities within the church is that many people act like they don't exist because the Bible is very detailed concerning false prophets he enlightens us in the scriptures and says that many false prophets have gone out into the world so because the text teaches us this spiritual truth, then that means you need to be on red alert. Amen. You know why? Because they are there. Yes. They are out there in the world. Amen. They occupy churches almost on every corner throughout the face of the earth. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. Praise God. And because we are given this warning, then everybody needs to to have the antennas up. Amen. Huh? Your radar need to be working. Amen. Amen. Everybody needs the gift of the discerning of spirits in this hour. Amen. And if you don't have the gift of discerning of spirits, you need to have a thorough knowledge of the Holy Scriptures. Because having knowledge and understanding of God's Word also gives you a level of discernment. Praise God. So the Bible says, believe not every spirit. Now, when I read this verse of scripture, that teaches me that there are other spirits out there. Amen. Now, we all know about the Holy Spirit. But the Bible talks about seducing spirits. He said, believe not every spirit. So anytime a spirit talks to you, whether that spirit comes to you directly, or whether that spirit, praise God, comes through a man or a woman. Whether that spirit is speaking through a particular religion. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible said, don't believe every spirit. I'm in the war with this fly. <laughs> praise God. Hallelujah. He said, believe not what? Every spirit. He said, but try the spirit. Every spirit needs to be what? Tried in the court of the law of God's word. Amen. Because until you try the spirit by the spirit, then you will never know if things are true or false. Right. This is why there is so much division in the church. This is why there are so many people in spiritual deception. It's because they don't take uh, the necessary steps to keep themselves from being deceived. And this is why the apostle is giving us these instructions that we might have the necessary tools so that we might keep ourselves in right standing with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he said, believe not what? Believe not every spirit, right? Amen. But try the spirit.
spirits. That word try means to test the spirits. And you're to test them by the word of God. The word of God is the spirit which you try spirits. Amen. You understand here. Amen. Glory to God. Just like in Acts chapter 17. When the apostle Paul ministered to the saints in Thessalonica. The Bible says the Bereans, they searched the scriptures to see if the things that he were teaching were true. Or, they were, or if they were false. You understand? And see, this is what we must do in this last day. Amen. See, so many people uh, spend most of their time shouting and, and, and waving their hand to things that they don't even know if it's true or not. Sometimes people just shout and wave their hand to things because the preacher sounds very good. Amen. He sounds very good in his delivery. You understand? Even the Bible teaches us in Romans chapter 16. The Bible says, amen, through fair speeches, through good words and fair speeches, they can see the hearts of the simple. So, folks, it is very important as saints of the Most High God that we try every spirit. And people don't, people don't have to be in the pulpit for you to try their spirit. Come on now. People can tell you they love you, but they will show you the, the total opposite. You understand? And what did the Bible say? Amen. It says us in 1 John chapter 3, he said that when we love, we shall love in what? Deed and in truth. Not in word and in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Now, if, if, a, if an individual who called himself a Christian is not loving you in deed and in truth, then guess what? They really don't love you, even though their lips says they do. Are you listening to me? Oh, praise God. This is why you got to try the Spirit. Because when you try the Spirit, you begin to discover people's real motives. Amen. You begin to discover their real motives and you begin to discover amen, what's really in their heart. Glory to God. So the Bible makes it very clear as saints of God what they should do. Amen. Because folks, we are living in the end time. And if you want to make it with Jesus Christ, you have to take precautionary measures to keep your soul delivered from the clutches of the enemy. Amen. Now we have many false prophets in the world. And let me tell y'all something. A false prophet in these days in which we live, they don't look like one. Amen. They look like a man of God. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. They look like one. They sound like one. But how many know that when you hear them preach, you need to listen to what they say? Amen. And you need to discern the spirit that is upon them. Because there's a lot of people preaching, you would think they anointed, and they really ain't anointed with the Holy Ghost. So you can be anointed with something else and not anointed with the Holy Ghost. Are you listening to me? Don't y'all know that Satan got an anointing? There is such thing as a demonic anointing. Praise God. And that demonic anointing ain't nothing but Satan's spirit upon that individual. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. And the demonic anointing can look so close to the true anointing to the point, praise God, you think it's just all the same. Because much of the time, people are going by feelings. And that's one thing you would never, you should never trust, is your feelings. You should never become emotional in this thing. Amen. How many know the sense of God need to be spiritual? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians that the natural man discerning not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are spiritually discerned. Saints of God, we got to move in the spirit. We can't move and act upon our emotions. That'll get you in trouble. That'll cause you to make mistakes. That'll cause you to trip and fall. That'll cause you to say things and make wrong decisions that you shouldn't be making. We got 
to be led by the Spirit of God. We have to be sheep with ears to hear that when God speaks to us, we become obedient and do exactly what He commands. Hallelujah. And this is why it's so important also that saints of God spend time in His Word. Because how do you want to know what is good, what is acceptable, what is perfect, and what is the will of God if you never take time out to get your mind renewed in the things of the Spirit of God? Hallelujah. Amen. And this is very important. And we must be in a position to try every spirit. Glory to God. And in order for you to try every spirit, you got to have some knowledge and understanding. Come on now. You got to have some knowledge and understanding of Scripture. You have to learn how to rightly divide the Word of God. You, are, you got to understand the principle of precept upon precept. Men 
is right or wrong. Everybody just goes for it because they misinterpret the scripture in Hebrews 13 where the Bible says that we're to submit to them that have rule over you for they watch for your soul. Amen. That they may do it with joy and not with grief that they might give an account. Praise God. Now while I do believe that a congregation is to be submitted unto their, their leader, glory to God, that the leader cannot lord over God's heritage. The leader of that ministry is not your daddy. He's not your papa. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? You're not to be calling him father, even though he may be your spiritual father. You're not to go outside the word of God. And just because he's your spiritual father, just because he's your ecclesiastical leader, doesn't mean that he Go 
possível. Não tem o poder de ler em nada. Tell you anything. And because it sounds good, you go for it. The Bible tells us in Jeremiah chapter 5. Listen to this. Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 31. Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 31. It says, the prophets prophesied falsely. Look at that. And the priests bear rule by their means. And my people love to have it so. And what will you do in the end thereof? Did you see that? The Bible said the prophets prophesied falsely. Isn't that amazing? How you would desire for a prophet of God to prophesy lie to you. Hmm? Amen. Yes, that's the day and age that we're living in. But it's nothing new under the sun because it was going on back in the days of the prophet Jeremiah. Amen. It was going on back in that time period just as well. The Bible said the prophets prophesied falsely. Praise God. Why would you want uh, a preacher to tell you something that ain't true? Why would you want that to happen? Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you why. Because people are in the flesh. Come on now. Amen. Amen. People want uh, the preacher to tell them something that is not true, yet make them believe that it is true. Amen. Huh? Amen. Praise God. This is why Ahab hated Micaiah. Huh? Amen. He hated Micaiah. In 1 Kings 22, Amen. Ahab said, I hate Micaiah. Because he never prophesied good to me, only evil. Look at that. This is how people are today. They want you to prophesy to them. They want you to tell them all good things. You understand? Well, what if, what if, what if it ain't good? What if, your, your, what if the prophecy is not good? Come on, somebody. See, this is the problem. We want the man of God to tell you what you want to hear. Hallelujah. And that's why the Bible said the prophets prophesied falsely and the people love to have it that way. It also said the priests bear rule by their means. Huh? And the people love to have it that way. Ain't that amazing? When the priests bear rule by their means, here you see the doctrine of the Nicolaitans being exercised even in the days of Jeremiah the prophet. Because when the priests were bearing rule, they were controlling the people. Huh? Yeah. Oh, yes, they were. They were controlling them. Let me tell you something. I would never want to control one person in my congregation. Amen. What I desire is what God desires. And what God desires is that you do it willingly. Amen. Because when you willingly submit, when you willingly humble yourself to follow the man of God as he follows Christ, now you're doing it freely and you're doing it because you love God. Amen. Huh? When the preacher trying to make you do this and make you do that, that's bondage. You understand? Amen. You're not even getting the choice to choose your own will. To do it or not to do it. Because people have forgotten that God looks at your motives. I don't care what you do. Even if you do the right thing, you can do it for the wrong reason. Because God looks at your motives. And people don't think that God looks at your motives. Hebrews chapter 4 and 12 says that God knows the intent, the motives of your heart. So anything we do for God, it should be from the love that dwells within. Amen. We ought to do it because we desire and we want to be obedient. Amen. Not because we feel somebody making us. Praise God. I will never make anybody do anything. I'm going to tell you what thus said the Lord. I'm going to tell you what the Bible said. And I expect you to obey if you say it. Are you listening to me? Amen. If people say they're Christian and they love God, amen, and they, they seem to be they seem to be rebellious against authority. And see, those are people you can't let uh, be involved in the services of God. You can't let them pray for people. You can't let them be an usher. You can't let them be on the praise team. You can't let them be in the choir. Because they're in rebellion. You understand? 
everybody has to come to a place in their life where they are willingly submissive to the authority of God himself. To the point that whatever God commands you, you submit. And you do it because you love him. See, that's freedom right there. Jesus came to set the captives free. Not to bring you back in bondage by a man making you do it. And if you don't do it, he throw you out because you didn't do it because he told you to do it. Hello, somebody. Oh, praise God. God said the priests bear rule by their means. Come on now. Hallelujah. You got preachers, praise God. Amen. They want to be the top dog. Amen. Just like in 2 John, 3 John, rather, the Bible said that Diotrephes, he loved to have the preeminence. How he had to be the top dog. And I'm going to tell you all this about preachers. When you get a lot of preachers in the same room, when a service is going on, almost every preacher in that room think they're the one that should be preaching. Huh? They think they are the one that should be preaching. You see what I'm saying? They can be listening to another man preach, but in their heart, they feel they should be the one preaching because truth really don't come, ain't, ain't really being preached unless it's coming out of their mouth. Come on, somebody. They love to have the preeminence. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And that's just the truth. We can go on with that one. Praise God. But folks, you got to try every spirit. You got to try every spirit by the word of God. And the first spirit you must always try is your own. And I'm going to tell you something. Most people in our churches never do that. They never do that. Most people are always skipping over themselves as if they are an angel in glory and they automatically begin to attack he or her. Come on, somebody. You are still wrong. Your spirit is wrong even in that. You understand? Jesus said, take the moat out of your eye. And he wants you to take some time out to get the most out of your eye. And then, praise God, amen, he's going to send you through some tests. Because he wants you to see whether those books is, is still there or, or you really did take them out. Because people can say, well, I got the moon out of my eye and a certain little instance can happen and they can see that those things are still in them. Are you listening to me? See, don't you can't play with this thing. This thing is serious. This thing is spiritual. And you can't just go through the motion. You can't be some modern day Pharisee pretending to go to God.
Spirit. Come on now. Hallelujah. The prophets prophesied falsely. Amen. And that doesn't mean every anytime someone begins to prophesy, you're not to approach it as if it's already uh, uh, wrong. You already looking for wrong. You ever see people just always just looking for wrong? Yeah. Well, see, your spirit is already wrong. So, so you're going to always think things are wrong no matter what a person does. You know why? Because you're always looking for that. You're always looking for what's negative, what's wrong. Praise God. You can get a real prophecy and yet you already misjudged it because your spirit is so negative. You understand? Hallelujah. You think somebody always out to get you. Come on. Everybody ain't out to get you. Amen. You ain't going for the oak and duck. That's right. Huh? Amen. God's people 
people ain't going. No. We pulled is a lie. Yeah. Huh? Uh -huh. We got on the whole armor of God. Yeah. Huh? I don't care how good it sound. But the good words and fair speeches, they deceive the hearts of the simple. The Bible says in Romans. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. So I ain't going by the sound good. No. Huh? No. I, would listen, I would rather listen to a preacher that ain't eloquent. Huh? Stumbles in some of his feet, but he anointed and the truth is coming out of his mouth. Then a preacher that's eloquent, sound good, very persuasive, huh? But his message is mixed and tainted with deceit. Come on now. And that's what a lot of people look at. They look at how, how good they sound. Huh? That's what they do. They look how good he sounds. Oh, he can preach. You know, I was dealing with a sister, amen, here just recently. They was talking about, oh, such and such can preach. Praise God. I said, I said, explain what you're talking about, sister, when you say he can preach. And I know exactly who the preacher she was talking about. Amen. And she said, well, he be preaching. I said, well, sister, let me ask you this question here. If he be preaching, then tell me why don't he believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Why, amen, do he not believe in the Sabbath? Why don't he believe that a woman should veil her head? Why, praise God, do he practice these pagan customs? Why do your pastor, amen, listen to hip-hop music, bumping it in his car, even after he's leaving the church? Come on, somebody. Amen. If your pastor don't even know what it means to be born again, how is he preaching? I said, you want to know why you say he preaching? Because he sound good to you when he preaching. Praise God. I said, but yet your pastor is in a lot of error. So tell me, how is somebody preaching when much of what they preaching ain't even the truth? But because it sound good, you dismiss what he said and you swoon by the sound that's coming from his mouth. That's why you can ask most people, amen, what did the preacher preach about? They will say, well, I don't know, but he sure preached. Now, how much sense does that make? That don't make good sense, do it. How is somebody preaching and you don't even know what they preach? And if you can't tell me some of the things they preach, I'm going to try it by the Spirit, and then I'm going to show you in the book of his error. So tell me, if I can find some error in this preacher, The word of God sets us apart. Ha! 
Hallelujah. Amen. That's why God's people don't do what the world is doing. Amen. Huh? That's why God's people don't do what the world is doing. Amen. That's why our conduct, our behavior, Amen. our mannerism, our conversation is not like the world. It's set apart. Come on. Unto God. To do the Father's will. Hallelujah. Praise God. People want to know why you don't go party. Praise God. Because the Bible, amen, condemns it. In Galatians 5, 19 through 21, the Bible says the works of the flesh of thee readily. And they that do these things are, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. That's why I don't party. Because it's the glorification of the flesh. And when I'm out there dancing the secular music, amen, I'm giving an expression of praise not to God, but to the enemy. That's right. People, people forgot that dancing is an expression of praise and worship. And I come to tell you, there's a lot of dancing going on in the world. There's a lot. Because people are dancing in the flesh and they are rendering that offering to the enemy. Many don't know that they're doing it, but that's what they're doing. Because the Bible tells us in Psalms 150, we have to praise God in the dance. That's a holy dance, a sanctified dance. And that dance don't look like the dances that are in the world. Don't look nothing like it. Huh? Come on, somebody. We ain't got to copy out the world. And that God is unique. There's nobody like him. And because there's nobody like him, we ain't got to copy off of nothing the world is doing. Because God got his own style. He got his own everything. He got his, he's got his own sound of music. We ain't got to borrow from the world. Huh? He has his own everything. Hallelujah. The Bible teaches us in the scriptures that many false prophets have gone out into the world. Amen. And many people have not obeyed God. And this is why so many people are being deceived in churches throughout the world. Praise God. How is it that preachers can get as rich as they get? Huh? You got a preacher with jets cost $65 million. Huh? You got a preacher in, in Fort Worth, Texas, got his own airport. Hmm? Named after him. Wow. Huh? International Airport. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Praise God. I mean, they be raking it in. I mean, raking it in. Hallelujah. Easy. Y'all listen to me. You want to know why? How, you want to know how they're able to rake it in? If you, if, you, if you get to a place where you can deceive people, right. amen, when you can bring them under a spell, right. when you can work witchcraft, yeah. amen, and even use the Bible deceitfully to work your witchcraft, right. huh? Amen. Man, you can, you can make all kind of money. And I want you to know where that tactic came from. That tactic actually came from the world. Praise God. Now don't get me wrong. They were, they, you had preachers and prophets and even in the Old Testament that was doing this. Praise God. Yes, yes, sir. And back in the days of Jeremiah and Ezekiel, praise God, they was raving in the prayer. They, 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 they had conspiracies and everything on how to uh, uh, steal the money from the people. Praise God. It ain't nothing new under the sun. They do it today. There are all kinds of schemes. You know why the preachers are able to get away with this? It's because nobody tries the Spirit. By the Spirit. Nobody calls this wrong and calls this right. Everybody just believes it's right because that's the preacher. But your preacher can be a false prophet. He can be a false apostle. Come on, somebody. He can be a false teacher and you don't even know it. And many people go by because he teaches a few things right. Because you know, a, a false prophet can, can preach some things right. He can prophesy a few things right. Huh? Come on now. 
A familiar spirit, amen, can tell you some things that are true. Amen. Huh? Amen. Uh, amen. A false prophet is operating under familiar spirit can tell you your name and your phone number and your address. And you be like, Ooh. hallelujah. Don't you know the devil know your name? He know your address and your phone number. And he can whisper it to that false prophet and you think it's God. How God ain't gonna dazzle you by no by by because uh, uh, the through, through the prophet who can just call your name and your address and phone number. God ain't gonna dazzle you like that. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He don't have to do that. You understand? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. God has many ways of exposing the false prophets and teachers. And one of them is, brothers and sisters, that the things that they prophesy don't even come to pass. Then you have to look at the doctrine that they preach. Amen. And because people don't study scripture, people don't try the spirit by the spirit, that's how they get away with it. And that's how they become filthy rich. Huh? Amen. Praise God. And then when you need a little help, you can't even go to the church and get no help, and yet they got millions of dollars in the bank. Huh? Come on now. Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. Bible call these preachers greedy dogs. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Amen. The book of Jews said they, they ran, amen, greedily in the era of Balaam. Hallelujah. Amen. And they went in the way of Cain. Hallelujah. And they went into the they went in the in the game saying of Korah. Praise God. You hear what I'm saying? Oh, bless God. You got to be careful of this spirit in this age that we live in. Because, folks, if you plan on making it, you're going to have to fight the good fight of faith. You're going to have to go to war in the spirit. You're going to have to stand up and fight. You're going to have to amen, be set for the defense of the gospel or you're not going to make it. This is why so many people are falling away today. They don't have no foundation to stand on. Oh, praise God. That's just the truth here. Amen. They have no foundation to stand on. Amen. Glory to God. And this is why the false prophets are getting over. This is why the false prophets have given the churches a bad name. This is why the false prophet, which has been used by Satan the devil, amen, to put a bad taste concerning Christianity and the name Jesus in the mouths of the unbelieving world. Hallelujah. And that's why when a, when a false prophet preach a lie, it needs to be exposed. Huh? Amen. Praise God. He needs to be rebuked. He needs to be exposed. Praise God. You understand? Amen. Glory to God. Because if, it's, if, if we don't correct what he said that's false, then the Bible says his word does eat as a canker. Huh? Amen. And you know what a canker is? It's like gangrene. When, you, when a person gets gangrene, my God, if you don't catch it early, it's spread all over your body and there's no hope. And that, 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 that false teaching or that proper lie that people receive, if we don't nip that thing in the bud immediately, it's going to spread and overtake you. Yeah. And this is why people become so immersed in all these lies to the point it's hard for them to come out of. Amen. Huh? Amen. That's just the truth here. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the Bible tells us these things. Amen. Amen. He says over here in 1 Peter chapter 2. This is my last scripture. 2 Peter rather, chapter 2, verse 1 through 3. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1 through 3. Listen to the Holy Ghost as he moves upon the apostle. Listen to what he said. Amen. 2 Peter chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. He says, matter of fact, I'm... Hold on. Second Peter. Okay, I'm in the wrong one. Second Peter chapter 2. Verse 1 says, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, 
who privately shall bring in damnable heresies. See that? Yeah. They shall privately bring them in. They will slither them in. Huh? Yeah. Praise God. Just like how men used to slip certain things in women's drinks when they would go to the bar. Huh? Yeah. The purpose was to seduce them. Exactly. Huh? So they could overtake them. Yeah. Huh? But this is what the false prophet does. Remember now, a false prophet is a religious hitman. He's sent by Satan to steal, kill, and to destroy you, and he can do it through deception. But he'll never present it as being deception. It will appear to be true, but it will be mixed with a lot of lies. You understand? Amen. And you gotta be able to catch it. That's why saints must become students of the word. We must be people of prayer and fasting. We must walk close to God because we can't allow anything to enter into our hearts that will corrupt us. This is why so many people have so many different doctrines and everybody fighting each other because everybody trying to prove who's right and who's wrong and y'all deceived and y'all under, under false prophet and y'all under the law and Y'all don't know what y'all talk about. And, and, and y'all in the Old Testament. And people come up with everything under the sun. You understand? Amen. And the same people that tell you you wrong, you, you can obviously look at all the error that they in. Praise God. Yeah. The pagan customs. But they'll tell you the Sabbath is wrong and the Sabbath is written. Yeah. But they'll, they'll tell you the Sabbath is wrong and yet they celebrate pagan customs. Come on, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. And yet the Bible condemned the pagan customs. It never sanctions them. It never authorizes them. That's why we don't do those things. Amen. You understand here. Amen. And you don't let people pull you into them. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. I don't care if it is your birthday. You don't let people pull you into stuff because that's what they in. See, the heathen is in it. And the heathen always want to pull the believer into it. And because saints ain't got no stands, they don't have no, no fight in them because they're too busy wanting to please everybody else, amen, they just allow the enemy to lure them right in his bosom and now they're doing what the heathen is doing. And God is not pleased. You understand here? Amen. Glory to God. You got to learn how to fight. You got to learn how to stand. Whether you're the only one or not. I don't care if you're the only one. Y'all forgot back in the days of Daniel the prophet, the Bible said that when the sound of the music was played, the whole Babylonian Empire was to bow to Nebuchadnezzar's statue. Praise God. And when that happened, what, what do you see? You see three men standing. Look at all these hundreds of thousands of people bowing and just the few standing. See, folks, that's how you have to be. Amen. You may be the only one in your family standing. Stand. Amen. You may be the only one on your job standing. Stand. Amen. You might be the only one, praise God, in your church standing. Stand. Amen. You ain't got to fall for the open day just to please everybody. Amen. You got to stand. If you don't.
And that's our problem today. People are afraid to be the only one. They don't want to be the cast out. They don't want, they, amen. People say, well, hey, you looking in the flesh and see everybody having fun doing all this devilment, all this fleshly activity, and then you, you let them woo you over there. Now you're in error. Now you're a bad witness. Now your witness is dead. You can't say nothing to nobody because you're in error. Hallelujah. You, lead, you let the people lead you away from God. Lead you away from the truth. Lead you away from what's right. Amen. You got to stand. Amen. Even though I'm the only one. Because I come to tell you that even though you may be the only one, you're still the majority. Amen. The Apostle Paul said, all men forsook me, but God stood with me. The preaching of the gospel might be fully known. Hallelujah. When you stand in for holiness, when you stand in for what's right, God is standing with you. You ain't by yourself. And when God is standing with you, you're the majority. If God be for us, who can be against us? Right. 
and everything they contradict the word of God is wrong. The songwriter said the Bible is right and somebody's wrong. The Bible has always been right. And I don't care what man say. I don't care what religion say. I don't care what denomination say. I don't care what your bishop say. Praise God. Amen. If they contradict them, the word of God, they are all liars. He said the truth will be evil spoken of. People hate the truth. They hate it. That's why Jesus was taken to the cross. Hmm? Jesus said they hate me because I testified the works is evil. The truth is hated today. Amen. John chapter 3, the Bible said men love darkness rather than light. Neither come into the light lest their deeds be reproved. Amen. Scripture said they hate the light. They hate it. When you hate the light, you hate God. Because 1 John chapter 1 said God is light. Jesus said in, in the gospel of John, he said, I am the light of the world. If any man follow me, you shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People hate the light. They hate the truth. They hate God. They hate Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's the truth. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why I don't go for the okie doke. People just say they love God. And doing everything God tells them not to. I ain't falling for that. Amen. Hallelujah. You love God, you have to prove it to him. Amen. Just saying it ain't, ain't, ain't getting nowhere with God. You got to prove it to him. Yeah. Every day you have to prove your love. Amen. Amen. To him. Amen. Every day. By denying that flesh. Huh? Yeah. And allowing his will to be done all day, every day, or he ain't pleased. Yeah. And you have just told on yourself that you don't love him. See, your spirit has just been tried. Yeah. Huh? Your spirit has been tried. Jesus said, if you love me, you keep my commandments. And if a person's not keeping his commandments, they don't love him, right? right. See, we just tried your spirit. Because right. the Bible say one thing and you say another. Your spirit has just been tried and you are wrong. You're one of another spirit. And the Bible reveals that in 1 John chapter 4 as the spirit of Antichrist. Because the Holy Ghost leads you into all truth. He never contradicts the word. He will never lead you or I to contradict what is written. Huh? Amen. Hallelujah. He goes on to tell us in 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 3. He said, and through covetousness, greed. Shall they with fame word make merchandise of you, whose judgment now for a long time lingered not, and the damnation slumbered not. Look at that. They shall make merchandise of who? Of you. Hmm? They raking it in the end of the They be raking it in, just raking it. Like a bunch of leaves in a pot. Huh? Filling up, filling up trash cans full of money. Huh? Just raking the people. Hallelujah. Lying to them. Amen. Dobbing them with untempered mortar. Huh? Prophelying to them. They ain't even, they ain't even prophesied. They prophesied. They, they, for, they tell them they fortune. They come on, they witches. Posing as a prophet. Huh? They warlocks posing as an apostle. Huh? Come on, somebody. Oh, pray God. This thing go deeper than y'all know. You think the devil ain't gonna uh, put up a good fight to try to keep you out the kingdom? You better believe he is. Nobody's getting into heaven without a battle. Nobody's skipping to my room into the kingdom of heaven without any battles. Acts 14, 22, that through much tribulation shall you enter the kingdom of God. Oh, you're in for a fight. You want to battle. You gonna have to fight. And how many know you gotta be in the Holy Ghost to do it and be victorious? I can do all things from Christ. Who give me the strength? Hallelujah! You ain't making it by yourself. You have to press through a lot. You have to fight. Amen. In this life, huh? To make it into the kingdom. 
to hit the mark yeah. for the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Jesus Christ. You understand? You have to fight the flesh. Hmm? You, have to, you, have to, you have to fight devils. All the influences in this wicked world. You have to fight that. Those things are trying to suffocate you. They're trying to take you down. They're trying to smother you. They're trying to kill you. So you can't see it because you're blind. Right. When you're spiritually blind, you can't see it. All the devil will let you see is a mirage. Yeah. A mirage is you see something, but it really ain't there. It, it, it appears to be there, but it really ain't even there. That's what he lets most people see. Amen. He never lets you see you're dying. You're drowning. You're suffocating. You're choking. Amen. Or he'll just let you see you having fun. Exactly. You just having fun. That's all you see. Right. Amen. Satan is, the, is a master illusion. Yes. He'll let you see stuff that ain't even real. Yep. Huh? Yep. You think you're having all this fun in the flesh, which you are having in the flesh, but he has blinded you from the truth to the point you can't even see you choking to death. Yep. You suffocate. You're dying. You're drowning. Mm -hmm. Amen. He knew them and just gut you with a knife. Yeah. But you can't see it. Because he's made you see. All you doing is having fun. You see how blind the devil makes you? Uh -huh. That's happening every day. And nobody can see it. He's just letting you see what he wants you to see. But he'll never let you see the truth because there's no truth in him. Right. All he's going to do is lie to you. And he's going to keep lying until you actually gave up your last breath and you never found God. Jesus. That's a soul he just won. Next. Now you're going to see your next family member. Hmm? Amen. Amen. I'm telling you. You got to fight every day. You got to come against devils every day. Huh? You better be strapped up too. You better be strapped I ain't talking about with some gun either. You better have on the whole arm. You better have a sword in your mouth. You better be, you better be a, a person of prayer and fasting because you need the anointing and you need the anointing to flow from your life. You don't just need it on you and it ain't flowing because you're not broken. You don't need that flesh getting in the way because when your flesh is in the way, it keeps the anointing from flowing. And moving and breaking yokes and casting out devils and, and really working through your life like it wants to. Mm -hmm. That's why fasting is important. Amen. It brings a lot of stuff in now and it helps to remove that flesh completely so the anointing can flow freely Hallelujah. in your life. Hallelujah. That's why we gotta get rid of the flesh. Yes, yes. Huh? Amen. Praise God. Are we making sense? Thank you, Jesus. And as a ministry, and I'm done. And as a ministry, this ministry, I get back to fasting and prayer. Our fellowship fast, as well as your own individual consecration. And don't think just because you go on a fellowship fast, no more other fast in your life. You still defeat it. Because you, you can't even conquer your flesh to go on an individual fast on your own. You think all I have to do is the fellowship fast, and that's all the fast I'm doing. You still ain't getting nowhere with God because God wants to take you higher. He wants to take you deeper. He wants to take you farther. And if, if that's all your mindset can ever get you to the place that, well, I am fasting on the fellowship fast, but I'm by myself. You've been eating all this time. Now it's time to fast. Amen. Fellowship fast. Every ministry should consecrate a fast for their ministry. Amen. Which we've always done here. Mm -hmm. Huh? But I think we've gotten away from it. Huh? Amen. Come on now. Amen. But everybody should have an everybody should be fasting what? Individually too. Right. Because if you have a relationship with God, there's the thing God won't call you to do individually, right? Right. You have an individual relationship with God, correct? Then God is going to call you individually on a consecration. Not just a fellowship fast, and that's it. That's it. I fasted already. You ain't got nowhere. You dreamed about hamburgers the whole time. You ain't got nowhere with God. Huh? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
My fast getting at 6 o'clock, but you got a hamburger and fries sitting right next to you, ready to dig in it, so it hits 6 o'clock. You're just wasting your time. Don't, don't think you're going to heaven, because you're not. You ain't got rid of this flesh. This flesh is what keeps you sinning all the time. And if this flesh don't die completely, you're going to keep sinning. And fasting comes to help us. Yes. It comes to help. Not only to take up that cross, but God will give you every help that you need. He's going to either take up that cross, that's one. He'll give you the Holy Ghost, that's another one. Mm -hmm. uh, crucify the deeds of your body by the Spirit. Then he'll give you another helper, fasting. Mm -hmm. Give you another one. He'll give you everything you need. Just like a good, a good corporate. Huh? When he hires like a, a janitorial firm to clean, keep the building clean, they supply all the things they need so they keep the building clean. Well, God will supply everything. And, the, and God shall supply all your needs. Yeah. He'll supply everything you need so there's no excuse for your flesh overcoming you in everyday life. That's right. There's no excuse for this building to be dirty when you get all the supplies in the closet. Amen. No excuse. No excuse for you allowing your flesh to overcome you and you had a Holy Ghost. Amen. That's right. And you say you pray. Amen. And you fast. And you said you're taking up your cross daily. Then the flesh should be dying. And, and, and in most cases, it should already be dead. Because dead men don't, dead men don't, don't fornicate. Amen. Dead men. Don't lie. You ever see somebody dead in the casket? Lie? No. You ever see somebody dead in the casket fornicate? No. You ever see them playing with the Ouija board? Mm -hmm. Huh? You ever see a dead person stealing? Mm -hmm. What about breaking the Sabbath? Mm -hmm. You ever see a dead person worshiping another God while they're dead? Mm -hmm. Well, dead people, when you dead, to sin, all that stuff is not manifesting in your life because you're dead right. to sin. Right. That's why those things should not be manifesting in your life. If they are manifest, what does that say? That flesh is still alive. Your flesh ain't dead. You better kill it or you're on your way to hell. That's just the truth. Ain't nobody going to heaven in the flesh, living after the flesh, no. manifesting flesh. No. Nobody, not one person, no. not even me. No. Nobody. Everybody made to the kingdom. Every one of them overcame the flesh. Those people walked in the spirit. They lived holy every day, all day. They overcame the flesh, the devil, and this world. Just like Jesus did. Just like Jesus did in everyday life, they did the same thing. They overcame. You all overcome this too. Right. And folk ain't overcoming none of these things. They just think they want to have it when they die. You are deceived. Amen. You better try the Spirit. By the Spirit. Amen. Folk can't even overcome their flesh. That's why they want to fast. You ain't making it to the kingdom. Because you got all that flesh that's killing you. Huh? That's why some of y'all are so secretive like you are. That's flesh. You're on your way to hell with your secret self. Huh? Y'all listening to me? And this is a shame. Huh? Amen. Amen. Like Elder Word didn't even say. Amen. And I, I promise you, in the name of Jesus, I ain't talking about nobody in our church. I, I promise you, I ain't talking about nobody in our church. Elder Word said, there's certain people down here that don't want to invite you to their house. I said, why? He said, they want you to see them with the big old 65 inch TVs on the wall. I'm like, wow. I think I've been preaching that one for a long time, haven't I? Amen. That's why people are invite me out. They, they wicked and evil and of the devil, and they're doing devilment. Because that's, that, that's flesh. That's not God. That's not Jesus Christ. That's the devil. Amen. Now how you say? 
how you love God. See, Bible said try the spirit. Because in the Bible, they went from house to house. They wouldn't hide. They went from house to house. Yeah. Nobody hiding nothing. Huh? Wasn't covering stuff up. They went from house to house. Huh? Yeah. Come on, people. Y'all don't like the truth now, do you? Amen. You love the truth, you gotta love all of them. <clears throat> huh? That's right. Praise God. Praise God. And that's the truth. And people, God wants you to understand. Every spirit must be tried. Every spirit. Starting with your own. Starting with your own. Start right here. That's where you start. This is the start. Anybody ever seen a board game? Huh? Yeah. What did it say? What do you got on the board game? What do you got in the corner? Start. Yeah. And it also has a finish. Start. You got to start right here. Pastor Walker got to start right here. You know why? I want to make it. Amen. I can't let nobody deceive me, so I got to try Every spirit start with mine. Amen. The way you talk to people. Huh? Amen. Your motives. You got to do all of that. You got to try all of that. Your motives for what you do. Amen. Your attitudes. We got to do all of that. Your attitude, all of that. You got to try that spirit, man. Because we want our spirit to be what? We want it to be right. The Bible said Caleb had another spirit. He didn't have the same spirit as all the rebellious children of Israel that came out of Egypt. But I was like, he had another spirit. He had the right spirit. Then you wonder why Caleb and Joshua were the only two that came out of Egypt that went over to the promised land. There were children in the, in the, in the wilderness that were born in the wilderness. And the Bible said all the children 20 years and younger went with Caleb and Joshua into the promised land. The children that were born in the wilderness were never in Egypt. They were never born. They were born in the wilderness. Huh? And they got to go with them. Their parents, they died in the wilderness. They died in the wilderness. Huh? Amen. Oh, praise God. praise God. That's just the truth here. So we have to try the spirit. Chance. 